All right, ladies and gents, today I have the Gen 3 Citadel. I want to do a video to run down the quick features. If you're not familiar with the Citadel series of packs, and I also wanted to go ahead and show you what the difference between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 is. Here is the Gen 2, one of my old bags I've used for a long time. It's, it's pretty beat up. It's held up really well. Um, main differences we're going to see right away. Shoulder straps. I went away from the seam binding tape, whatever you want to call it, on the edges to a more streamlined design here. Still features a nice soft backing material on there. Gen 2, Gen 3, updated shoulder straps. Gen 2 didn't have a fixed or a built-in frame sheet. This is one of those things where I got enough people asking me and asking me and asking me and asking me, please, please, please include a frame sheet. So I finally gave in to the frame sheet. Now, the reason why I never included a frame sheet is because I always generally, when I travel or go anywhere for, for business or whatnot, I always have my laptop in here. I always have sometimes a, a hard level three plate backer. I carry a lot of files in there. So all of that keeps the bag pretty stiff, but not everybody does that. It's one of those things where I just gave in and I went ahead and included it. So Gen 3 has now has a built-in HDPE frame sheet. The Gen 3 also has these built-in loops here. I've made some custom mods in the past for people who wanted these extra loops. Some of them were hanging a hydration bladder. Some people were hanging a carabiner off keys and all kinds of whatever accessories they wanted. So I went ahead and installed them in there and made them part of the Gen 3. These are also in there for something else that I will be offering, which I'll cover later. Here's a little quick sneak peek. It's for a DSLR. I'll go into, into that later. Overall, that's pretty much it. Big changes were the shoulder straps, the frame sheet, those added loops, everything else. I've gotten this pack pretty much to where I want it. I've told people from the get-go, this bag was my perfect bag. Now, if it's something that you like, if, it, if it's features that you like, then by all means, pick one up. I know it's not gonna be for everybody. It is what it is, you know, backpacks. I mean, even personally, I own over almost 200 backpacks. You know, you, you always try to find that that bag that's just gonna be just right for you. And I got to the point where, you know, I, I say, you know what, I'm just gonna make my own because nothing out there was just right. Some of them were 70% there, maybe 80%, but not quite, not quite a hundred percent like this bag is. So this was a pretty much a custom tailor bag that I designed from the ground up for myself and a lot of you guys like it so that's great i'm really happy it's 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 pretty much my baby so yeah big props and big big kudos to everyone that has one and likes them it, it it makes me feel really proud of of my design so another question i get is how do you load up your bag can you go over the features and explain why you did what you did on the features of the bag so let's get into it. Let me go ahead and get rid of this Gen 2. All right. Notice on the front here, you have this soft material. It's called Tweave. Really strong material. It's stretchy and it, it expands pretty nicely. Now, it's not as durable as Cordura. That's a given. It's stretch. However, I've beaten the crap out of my even my prototypes and my Gen 1 Citadels and this material has held up really well. Obviously, don't go putting any sharp objects in here. I mean, even honestly in the Cordura, you, you put a sharp object in there, a knife or shears or whatever, it's, it's, you're probably gonna get a tear. The reason I did that is I like to have an expanding pocket. So if you have like a jacket or something loose, a beanie, a pair of gloves, something you wanna dump real quick, you can go ahead and toss that in there like that. Now you can see, obviously anything you put in here that's gonna push this tweed out, it's gonna print. So obviously you're not gonna put a handgun in here 
um, anything else valuable maybe you don't want to print and show off that you have it this pocket was really designed to carry soft objects beanie gloves a packable jacket and anything else in there inside of this pocket there are three individual pockets you can kind of see that on camera I purposely made them these sizes for a specific reason I always carry a portable battery this is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery fits in there perfectly I got my Ray-Ban sunglass case it'll fit in there perfectly and in my last pocket I carry a multi-tool and it's sheath fits in there perfectly now obviously you can fit any other object in there as well top pocket same deal we got three individual pockets with the last one being split in two the gen 1 that was just it was just three big pockets I went ahead and updated the gen 2 and gen 3 to have two individual pockets I'm yeah, best to show you here on this part here I typically carry a little note a little notebook a little note you know sketch pad I got business cards in there the middle compartment is big enough for a passport I did it on purpose so anything I mean passports a good size object if you travel a lot you may want to put it in there you know but if you're worried about security reasons you may not but the pocket is big enough for a passport and if you have a passport you know that this is a pretty large object and there are a lot of other items you may want to carry that will fit in this pocket perfectly on the end here i have two smaller little pen pockets one pocket i keep a ballpoint pen a sharpie the other little pocket i keep a usb cable i also typically carry nail clippers and chapstick it's one of those things you always wish you had it and you can never find one so you can put it in that little pocket nail clippers i tend to pick my nails sometimes and you know i work on my hands and i i, I get scratches and my skin peels or whatever and I was got a hangnail instead of picking that I want to just clip it right off kind of weird I know you also have room here similar to the bottom pocket so here I got some stickers I carry for giveaways and I got my wallet obviously not everybody's gonna carry their wallet here I typically actually don't but just as for reference you can carry a wallet or other similar size object there reason i put these smaller organizational pockets inside of these bigger pockets is i've used so many bags where they have pockets but they don't have micro pockets your stuff is all just being floating around in there keys flashlights whatnot everything's gonna get in there it's gonna scratch up it's gonna beat everything up and you're you put your hand there you're fishing for stuff total pain in the ass so i really wanted to have those micro organizational pockets in the front panel on the side more tweeve pretty big pocket here here's my camel bag i typically carry my water in to work out and whatnot pretty large bottle this is a 24 ounce your nalgene will also fit not sure how big this is but as you can see it's it's pretty large about the same size actually about the same circumference that'll fit in there here is a looks like a another 26 ounce Yeti that'll fit in there so it's, it's big enough where it expands pretty nicely and this angle here is nice so I did it on purpose as well so if you got your your pack on your back you can take your bottle and you can if you're if you're flexible enough you can reach back and you can actually take the bottle out obviously a little more difficult putting the bottle in but if you want to quickly pull it out you also have access to this pocket from your side so i typically always carry a pack when i go to a shot show or a trade show if you want to collect swag or give away swag you can just use it as dump pockets as well so i wanted this to be nice and open so you can dump stuff in there you can quickly quickly grab stuff out obviously you can you know drop in a bunch of other random crap in there so you know you can put your gloves beanie or anything else in there as well packable jacket goes in there as well also on the top I'll quickly I'll quickly show you let's take that guy out here's a standard capacity magazine also drops in fits perfectly these smaller pen pockets mag pistol mag 
drops in there perfectly as well. So these pockets, I really put a lot of thought into making them as universal as possible to fit as many objects as you could that are roughly the, the same size. So if you're gonna carry, you can have extra mags in there. It's gonna fit, it's not gonna float around. You're not gonna just toss all this stuff in, the, in one big pocket. Also those smaller pen pockets, you got a flashlight, you got a knife if you don't wanna carry it on you or if you're one of those dudes that wanna carry four knives, go ahead, be on, by all means, it'll fit in that same little smaller pocket. My old school Surefire Aviator fits in there perfectly as well. So you can see how universal this pocket really is. All these objects will fit in that micro pocket just fine. And it'll fit a larger mag too. I just don't have one on me. So you can fit like a Glock 17 mag in there. 19 mag, it'll fit. The double stack will fit just fine. Also going to the side of the bag, you notice I have one set of side compression straps. I absolutely detest having one, two, compression straps on both sides. Now for an EDC pack, I think having anything more than one on each side is excessive. You're trying to get into your pack, you don't want to be opening one, two, three, four compression straps. As you can see, this is a full clamshell pack, which is my absolute favorite. If you ever travel in the car, you gotta reach back in the back seat, you wanna grab your stuff. Having a top loader is super annoying. Having a roll down with the clips on the side, super annoying having a bag that only opens halfway also super annoying if you're trying to pack the bag you want to be able to open it complete have it completely opened up so you can pack all your stuff nicely like a suitcase but if you don't want if you don't want to open it all the way every single time i put these halfway there so you can go ahead zip halfway and now this bag opens up like this there you go. So now you have a half clamshell zip pack. And if you want to open it all the way, go ahead and open those guys up. And you have a full clamshell. Makes it much easier to pack your stuff. Going on to the back of the pack. Like I mentioned before, streamlined shoulder straps. We still have a nice soft weave in the back. <laughs> nice fabric, super expensive, especially when you're buying you're buying US made fabrics. This stuff is not cheap. Um, you probably cry if you saw my materials cost in this bag. It's it's a monster. Sternum straps are removable. Gen 1 had had them fixed and you guys want to remove them. All good. Went ahead and just updated the buckles to a removable buckle and a three-quarter inch strap. All the webbing keepers are elastic you just fold them onto themselves so you can roll it up and get them out of the way you kind of pretty much preset it and how the saying goes set it and forget it i mean typically you're not going to keep readjusting these two simple d-rings here for keys you know something else like a light water bottle um hand sanitizer whatever you want to carry i also went ahead and added a couple more loops here for any other attachments kind of an aesthetic thing too but it is a isn't a utility thing. These three raised mesh compartments, um, they're more for airflow. This will keep you cool enough. Um, the air channel will, will travel through here. Uh, the Cordura itself isn't very isn't very breathable material, so you don't want to have all Cordura on the back. And this is a little bit raised off with the with the closed cell foam. So this bag uses all closed cell foam. If you're not familiar with what, what closed cell is. Closed cell, open cell, closed cell is hydrophobic. It does not absorb water. You think open cell is like a sponge. So if you use open cell, it's also squishier and that gets wet, it's gonna absorb water like a mother. So closed cell foam costs more, but it's worth it, more dense. So everything here is all closed cell foam. I went ahead and kept this pass through here. Originally it was for a belt. Now I've never actually used this back with the belt, never had the need, but I also have a, a piece of hook in there, Velcro hook. Uh, at some point, I'm gonna make a small pouch, like a concealable pouch, so you can put cash, your ID, or passport, or any of their documents if you're traveling that you don't want to get jacked, or if you're if you're a shady dude and you want to carry drugs. And if you see this, this all has a seam tape seal here. So if you actually look at it from first appearance. 
you can't really tell there's actually a pass through there so it looks pretty sneaky you can't tell there's a, a hidden compartment there obviously this pack has three inch loop field here for patches so not all our colorways are going to have the loop field on there sometimes it just looks good sometimes you kind of just don't want to go overly tactical now i get it the bag is camo it looks pretty tactical but you figure fashion bags tons of fashion bags are camo as well and they're not super fully tactical um having the loop on here sometimes i'm not sometimes i like it sometimes i don't want to rock something without loop so the dnc obviously looked really sexy with that dnc loop so i included it on there the the roadie brush stroke will not have the loop on there so you see a little more of the pattern i think it looks pretty good so three inch so when you buy patches if you buy our patches typically our patches are always gonna be two by three no no taller than three inches because that's kind of the sweet spot we've noticed three inch height is the maximum you buy a four inch patch it's gonna it's gonna be too big so two by three is kind of the golden, the golden size this is a two by three so you can see it fits on the height of the loop perfectly finish it on the back here you notice these two side handles so you can briefcase carry this or if you are going to be in the vehicle in your back seat if you don't want to put the pack in this way if you want to go ahead and lay that guy down to look a little more discreet and you slide that into the car you have a nice handle here to go ahead and slide that back out also makes it easier when you're traveling you got to shove this under a seat or anywhere else loose side handles are, are really are really convenient so jumping into the rear compartment here you notice this is a half zip this pocket was designed for your laptop and documents so a lot of packs typically have a laptop compartment but it's just one big pocket i wanted to have my laptop separate from my documents keep them organized keep them separate if you're going to pull out your laptop you're not pulling out all your your paperwork as well do that on purpose it is padded this sleeve is padded this whole thing this whole back the whole back is padded so and you're always going to have the high vis panel inside we went with the red on the dnc one other nice feature about having a separate document is if you travel if you're picking up souvenirs if you're picking up uh, brochures flyers um, a shot show you're picking up a lot of a lot of flyer swag stickers anything that you don't want to crumple up and fold and, and fall apart you can go ahead and slide that in there it's going to preserve your flat items really nicely so you're not getting your home and everything is crumpled up and folded also on the back we always bar tack our shoulders there will always be stronger stitching here um, just something we always do it's going to reinforce the edges so you can see we got one two three four bar tacks on there is this the shoulder straps are not going to come off um, that's that's done on that's done by design on there also on the back if you're still rocking a beast of laptop like this if it fits it ships it's in there that's a <laughs> that's a beast if you got an even bigger laptop like a, a gaming laptop it'll probably fit in the document tab instead of back there it'll fit Ooh, that's freaking heavy now if you also want to rock a hard armor insert medium sappy drops into either the document tab or the laptop compartment you can probably rock a, a large sappy in there as well i sometimes will carry a oh, it's not a level four plate i'll carry a, a slim flat level three plate various companies make them um they're pretty easily pretty easily found online you can rock soft armor as well so like a soft armor backer so that'll that'll fit in the back as well and that'll keep all your that'll keep that stuff separate from your main compartment now let's get to the main compartment if you're probably wondering why this bag is is kind of slouching and it's kind of wants to fall over it's because on the inside this front pocket here let's go ahead and open this up all right 
So on the main lid here, you got two pockets. This one has a gusset and expands out. This one does not. I'll tell you why in the reason. So the reason this bag wants to fall over right now, typically actually stands up pretty well, is because this is where this guy goes. So if you want to carry a piece, it'll fit in there. You can fit a larger, larger gap. Um, it'll fit a full size, full frame clock in there just fine. Alternatively, you can carry also a, if you got yourself a little notebook, go ahead and drop that guy in there as well. Fits no problem. The bottom compartment. Why is there a gusset there? This one, I typically have gloves, um, beanie, or any other soft item as well. Now, the reason I have that is because when I'm carrying my camera, my DSLR full frame, I typically have it in the bottom. So this will act as an additional cushion or padding for my camera. Or if you got like a drone case or anything else, you're gonna, you're gonna put on the bottom. This extra padding here will expand. It'll keep it, it'll out, pretty much act like foam where it'll keep the, the item protected. So that's why I did that. Getting into the back of the pack, as you can see here, it's all loop lined for your pouches and other accessories. We make pouches, various sizes. They're all hooked back. Grab and go handle. This is the Go Pouch 2 small. We make a wide version that we typically have sold with Superior Defense as part of their, <laughs> their sandwich bag line. We call them Go Pouches. He likes to call them sandwich bags. It's all good. It's the same, it's the same pouches. Um, this is the medium size pouch. This is the large size pouch, also hook lined. Now this this pack, easy to configure. You can go ahead and drop this big boy in there and you can rock two small pouches in there. wide in there check that out that's a lot of organization quick grab and go you can see all this stuff in there all organized when you open up your pack nothing's gonna just fall out and, and crash into the ground now typically the only thing I keep kind of loose in my bag it's gonna be like a soft jacket so on the gen 3 you have the webbing there so you can just clip that dude right on to your pack directly so this guy attaches to your pack with these slit clips. Fairly easy to operate. You just slip in right there. Slip in through the webbing. And then these guys will slip in through there. Obviously it's easier if you don't have any weight in here and if you put the clip on the, the webbing first, but I work backwards sometimes, so like to make my life harder on myself All right. so just like that and if you're rocking your camera in there and you want to get to your to your stuff in the bottom just go ahead and flip that dude right on its back and there you go so a couple reasons why it's on there keys hydration bladder so at some point we'll release this camera bag so you can carry your camera and have it separate as well another, another neat little pouch that i've been prototyping for a while and I've never released is instead of having a clip on I actually made this monster of a panel now it's also hooked back this guy will fit just like the other one and this this pouch is actually this pouch separated and instead of a, a top flap it has a zipper, early prototype. Um, the final one will have a zipper here instead of a flap. This will fit the same thing up to a 24 to 70 size lens with the body, 5D, A7R4, A7 III, or whatever larger cameras. So you carrying the body lens and this guy was designed to carry a 400 millimeter telephoto lens. Um, obviously it'll fit smaller lenses in there 
um, but it'll fit up to a 400 millimeter lens. This guy here in the front is for the tripod adapter for those giant lenses, the tripod support. That slips in there in the front. Um, Velcro hooked, and it's a little bit larger than the large go pouch. Obviously, it will fit. Bam, check that out. Boom, right there. Fits no problem. Go ahead and toss your other dudes right back in there. Just like that. Shout out to Prevail Projects for the dope patch. You still, you still take your keys. Put that some bitch right there. Boom, look at that. Come on. Look at that. Awesome, right? So, a lot of versatility in this pack. You still got space to toss some more crap in there. And I'll prove it. Take this dude. Toss in. Shout out to Audi Gear. Awesome Alpine jacket. Dope jacket. What did I tell you? This is a deceptively small pack. Boom, look at that. And the best part is because this compartment is separated and it, is, it doesn't impede on your main compartment, I'm going to go ahead and toss my MacBook, my docks. Boom, look at that. That's a lot of crap in that pack. And the bag isn't super ginormous, right? So obviously not everybody's going to carry this much crap in their bag. Some of you will, some of you won't, but just a testament of how versatile this bag is. Be sure you sign up to our newsletter. Um, we will make announcements about these camera inserts in the near future. Now, a couple of criticisms that I'd like to address regarding this pack. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, this pack is pretty much my baby. So, it's like the, the Jordan meme. So anytime someone wants to, to talk trash or they want to tell me my, my, my pack is overpriced or whatever, you know, I, I take that personally, right? Um, I put a lot of heart and soul in this pack. Getting this thing manufactured has just been, sometimes been an absolute nightmare. Honestly, the last drop we did just took absolutely forever. We got hit with COVID delays, material delays. It was just an absolute nightmare. And that's after we were promised that everything was 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 good to go. So. You know, stuff happens. It, it sucks. It it it's not fun. It, it definitely. I, I take it all that stuff personally, and it, I feel for you. I absolutely hate waiting for stuff, and you know, waiting that long which just just sucks, right? Now the price. Yes, it's this bag is super expensive. You're we're hitting almost three hundred dollars. Now keep in mind, we're not a big company. You know, we're not mass producing these in the in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of units. We're not doing thousands of units. You know, we're manufacturing in the U.S. Very small, custom scale. Uh, production runs so we don't get a lot of labor breaks our, our labor prices are absolutely astronomical we're getting these manufactured right now in in california by a, a military contractor they make a lot of stuff for for socom it's quality bag but we're not making a lot so you know it's our prices are really high you know don't, don't think that we're, we're we're selling this bag at two three times you know of, of what our cost is because we're not you'd be you'd be probably surprised of how little we actually make per pack um just because just we just don't have the volume yet you know it's just that's just the reality of, of where we're at we're still kind of in that um not we're not doing you know custom one-offs we're not handmade they are you know produced by by a production flow so it is a production quality pack but it's still small scale so because we have a small scale our labor rates are high we're not getting those huge price breaks now it'd be awesome at some point to get to that where you know we can offer this pack at a lower price point but right now and even just the materials i mean this bag is sewn in usa the materials are all u.s made so our, our costs are, are ridiculously high now i get it um if it's something that you just can't get into you know i, I get it it's totally cool but you don't need to go and and, and go online and just start talking trash because you don't really understand what the the process it takes to make a bag and if you and if you think i'm full of it go ahead you know design your own bag go to market with it and you'll realize how 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 hard it is to do a full pack especially something with this much labor you know all these extra pockets that that stuff costs time and it's it's super expensive you know trust me so that's the price thing 
Um, a couple of people asked me, you know, why don't you use the super sexy uh, Aqua Guard zippers on the sides? Um, my original prototype actually had that on there. I decided to go against it because they are hard to open with one hand. So this pack right here, one hand operation, no problem. So if you got your bag in the back seat, you want to go back there, take this, open it up, reach in and grab something, you can do that with one hand, right? These AquaGuard zippers, it's it takes more... Let me try to get it there. It takes more effort to open up, right? This this extra rubber material to make it water resistant is that much harder to use to open. Um, that's pretty much it. It's it's it was more of an annoyance thing. The color options suck. You can pretty much get that in black. Not very many colors. You know, I'm not ordering thousands of yards where I can get I can get custom dye lots. It's just not going to happen right now. Um, so I like to color match here with the YKK. I'm still using quality YKK zippers, um, US made. It's with the Ranger Green, the government, the government zipper. So it still looks really good. All right, check this out. So for historical purposes, here is one of the old school uh, Citadel prototype. You can see, like I said, I had the Aqua Guards on there. They're just too hard, too hard to open. Um, still have the tweed pocket here and on the back. Um, obviously, I went away from the Molly in the front, but this this pack here now is I don't know 20 2014. You see it's how hard is that to open? Pain in the ass. I still have the Velcro line in the old school pack. I had the mesh on top and just Velcro here, but this actually was a hidden compartment there. I didn't want to overdo the, the Velcro, so I kind of ditched that and just went with just regular. Um, lighter uh, pack cloth on there and this i went away to zip the mesh because if i'm gonna carry a, a piece i don't want that to be transparent i don't be able to see my piece the other one was the the handle um now knock on the reviewer you can you can obviously tell like when you when you hold this this droops down obviously there's a lot of stuff in here it's it's, it's pretty heavy it's reinforced stitch it's it's not a pop off reason i did that versus webbing i also wanted the the matching Cordura so whatever print I'm using on the bag this is gonna match you got plenty of padded foam on there it's a really soft carry handle to use if you're using webbing even though this original prototype had padding this webbing is super abrasive if you if you spent enough time installing molly pouches on the on a, on a belt a vest or anything else you will know your hands will get red just from rubbing it going back and forth it's just not a very soft material to use if you use webbing on the pack you're gonna have to buy the matching color for the fabric and that's not always gonna be available off the shelf the main reasons why I went with the Cordura matching versus webbing it's super abrasive and it just doesn't color match and I think it just looks much much more sleek with the Cordura versus the webbing you know all these little things i i i do for a reason i have made these changes and mods and revisions based on my my personal preference and you know if you have any questions on you know why did you do this why did you why did you do this way why did you opt for this instead of that just hit me up shoot us a dm i'll explain and you can see the original proto actually had much more similar shoulders as the gen 3 but i ended up going right back to my original prototype funny how it is and that's why you keep your old protos last thing i want to cover is people aren't thrilled about the return policy we make these in this very small scale um you know we're just not in that size where we can just let people buy bags return in 30 days you know it's it's it, it'd be nice to we get to that point but right now it's just not reality for us and i get it you know you know some guys want to you want to you want to buy you want to try it out if you don't like it, I'll send it back but we just we just can't take that take that hit and try to sell bags use bags or you know secondhand bags and whatnot but if you're the kind of guy you want to use it for a few weeks you want to try it out you want to go hike with it or rock with it travel with it and if you don't like it return it this is probably going to be the back for you not a knock on you i, I get it you know we're, we're trying to get more and more out there to to dealers as well so you can go to their shop you can you can look at it in person you can check it out you know as more reviews go out there it's something that you can you can watch more and more videos and, and people commenting on and 
and describing the features and it's hopefully something that you like and you won't you won't have buyer's remorse when you when you pick it up repairs warranty and whatnot we warranted the bag against factory defect so if you get a bag and you pick it up and the shoulders fall off or you pick up a handle and it comes off or you know a, a zipper uh, stitching comes undone you know we'll cover stuff like that now if, if you get something dirty or you know if you go ahead and you get a hole in something we're not gonna leave you hanging i mean obviously we can't cover regular use abuse and whatnot um, we'll still try and hook you up you'll send us a you know picture of your of your defect it's key in mind you know these materials are strong they're not they're not invulnerable big 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 thing is um stuff with 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 hook back if you take this hook and you run it against you know like this you scratch it against your your loop or your tweed or your cordura it's gonna fray if you take it against a mesh oh man you know you, you take velcro and you run it against your cotton shirt it's gonna just pull all those threads out you'll also ruin your your mesh as well so you know try to be cognizant of of you know this this isn't a cnc machine piece it's a soft bag like i said our warranty covers factor defects if you want to if you have a problem with your bag hit us up we'll try to, we'll do our best to take care of you yeah this is the gen 3 citadel we're going over the difference between the gen 2 and the gen 3. also here's a little quick sneak peek of the friday drop coming up we're doing a you know og commando patch cell phones now these iphones having so many lenses it's uh it's it's pretty it's pretty hilarious i think people even make a case that has uh arnold here and the rocket launcher is is in lenses anyway before i ramble on too long citadel gen 3 will be releasing more on march 26 if you're watching this video after march 26 we have more and more coming we have we're planning on releasing a uh, brush stroke um sometime in april again if you're watching this after april just know that we have more and more colors coming out um chocolate chip and some other very special colors that i'm working on sample colors right now so stay tuned be sure to sign up to our newsletter subscribe to this or whatever this do a button is um notifications whatever I, i'm not gonna be one of those youtube dudes if you want to if you want to if you want to follow us if you want to find the stuff you know where to go uh nextgenwarfighter.com instagram at nextgenwarfighter at gear Horse anonymous be sure to sign up to our email newsletter and be sure to follow our blog on nextgenwarfighter.com where we'll be posting photos of our stuff and, and video links and whatnot so cool Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.